Hi, I'm Jim Grange. This is just a lecture just showing you how to do a two-way independent measures analysis of variance in SPSS. So I've already done a video showing you how to do a fully repeated measures ANOVA in SPSS, but this will be uh, doing an independent measures ANOVA. So first of all, let's break down the term two-way independent measures ANOVA. When I tell you that this is what we're doing, what do these terms mean? Well, the two-way just means that there are two independent variables. So in this case, there are just two things that the experimenter has manipulated or just that the experimenter is controlling within the uh, study. The independent measures just means that all of the manipulations that are happening in, in the study are occurring between subjects. That is, every subject will be assigned to one condition out of the whole study. No participant will take part in more than one condition. So this is the complete opposite to a uh, repeated measures analysis of variance. This is where a subject takes part in every single condition within the study. So let's look at a very concrete example. You might be interested in whether lecturing style uh, influences exam scores, but also whether the amount of revision that someone engages in, in uh, influences their final scores on an exam. So we have two independent variables within our study here. That is the lecturer style and uh, the amount of revision that they're doing. So in analysis of variance terms, these are called our factors. So factors just means what your independent variable is, what it is that you're manipulating. Within each independent variable, we have two levels. Now the levels just refer to what the manipulations actually are. So within our factor of lecturer style here, we have two levels. We have one lecturer who's very, very boring with their presentation, and we have one lecturer who's very interesting with their presentation, quite entertaining with their delivery. Within our factor of revision, we also have two things that we're manipulating. So one group of participants will ask them to engage in lots and lots of revision. Another group of participants will ask them to engage in no revision whatsoever. And we're just interested in, in how these two factors influence exam performance and whether they interact in any way at all. So displaying this uh, factor structure visually, we uh, see this here. So we have our two factors which are shown in the two circles. So we have lecturer style and the amount of revision that people engage in. So these are our independent variables. These are what we're manipulating. Each of these independent variables has two levels. Uh, for lecturer style, we have interesting versus boring. And for the revision amount, we have lots of revision versus no revision. So these circles here are called our factors. The boxes here are called our levels, the levels of each factor. So let's look at some concrete example here. So this is just artificial data, but this could well be scores that someone's obtained from looking at a study such as this. So we have participants in each of these conditions here. So we've got uh, some participants who were exposed to an interesting lecture and were asked to revise. Then we've got a separate group of participants. Remember, this is fully between subjects also exposed to an interesting lecturer, but they were asked to engage in no revision. And then vice versa here, we've got boring lecturer with lots of revision, boring lecturer with no revision. So we've got subjects in each of these four conditions here, and we've got scores. Our dependent variable is just a percentage in the final exam that these individuals are actually scored. So what we want to do is to enter this data into SPSS and to see whether each of our factors are influencing the data in any systematic way, and also whether there's any interaction between the two factors. So one thing to note in SPSS is how to enter the data. So this is quite different from a repeated measures analysis of variance. In repeated measures analysis of variance, in each column we named what our factor and what our level was, and then each row represented the score of each individual participant. Now data entry for fully independent design is slightly different. All you have to remember when you're inputting data into SPSS is that each row always represents data for individual participants. Um, you will never have data from different participants contained on the same row. This just doesn't happen in SPSS. Okay, so what I've done here is I've entered the scores for each uh, of the participants into the first column. Um, so all of these uh, numbers here were just taken from uh, this table here in order. So there's 65 down to 55, then 40 down to 35, etc, etc. So I've got all of these scores here. 
So each row is representing an individual subject, so this is the important thing to remember. But now, of course, we need to tell SPSS which condition each participant was in, because at the moment it just doesn't know which condition participant 1 was in, which condition participant 2 was in, etc. So what we do is in the next two columns, because we've got two factors, in the next two columns we declare which level of each factor each particular subject was. So this might sound a little bit abstract at the minute, but if we just look back at this original data here, participant 1 here with a score of 65 was in the level of interesting lecturer of the uh, lecturing style factor and in the revision style factor this particular participant was in the revised condition. Now participant 9 here was also uh, in the interesting lecturer level but was in a different level of the second factor so they were in the no revision condition. So we need to start telling SPSS which condition each participant was. So first of all, we want to rename these columns with the names of our factors. So to do this, just go down to Variable View. And then in the name, uh, in the name uh, section here, we'll just write the name of each of our factors. So first of all, we would say uh, um, Lecturer Style. And in the uh, third row, we would rename this particular column Revision Style. Uh, or amount, doesn't really matter. Okay, so if we go back to data view now, you'll see that we've got these two columns renamed. Now what we can start doing is in each of the uh, boxes for each column, we can start telling SPSS which of the two levels of each factor each particular subject was in. So if we go back to this box here, maybe go back here, so here we've got our two factors, lecturer style and revision amount. Each has got two levels, interesting, boring, and for the revision amount we've got lots versus none. So for each factor, if we call the first level level 1 and the second level level 2, we can start to input these numbers into SPSS to tell the computer which condition our participant was in. So recall that participant 1 was in the first level of lecturer style, but was in the uh, was also sorry in the first uh, um, level of revision style. Now this is true for the first eight participants, so we can enter number one into all of these first eight participants. But now, if we look at the um, second eight subjects, so we've just entered these first eight subjects. Now the second eight subjects are also in the first level of the first factor but they're in the second level of the second factor because they're now in the no revision condition. Okay, So what we would do for the next eight subjects, we'd still put number one for the first condition, but now we would put number two for the revision style because they were in the no revision style condition. Now all of these ones and twos get a little bit confusing, so it would be very handy if we could tell SBSS what a one means and what a two means in each of the two conditions. So we can do this by going back to variable view and clicking on this uh, value section here. So if you see, if you hover over it, you get this little uh, dialog box here. So if you just click on this, this uh, dialog box uh, pops up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to tell SPSS what, what each of these levels is called. So instead of referring to 1 and 2, we want to be able to refer to interesting versus boring, for example. So what we do for the value, we press value 1. Uh, sorry, beg your pardon. Let's first of all go to the lecturer style, so the first factor. So the first level of our lecturing style is interesting. So we type value 1 here and then interesting here, and then we'll click add. Our second value we want to be called uh, boring because this is the condition where the lecturer is very boring. So click add again. Now click OK. Now for the revision style row we'll do the same thing. Go to the value column. that get this little dialog box here. Click on it. So the first level of our revision style factor was uh, lots of revision. Our second level was no revision, so none. Remember to hit add every time, now click OK. Now when you go back to data view, you'll see we've still got ones and twos, 
But if you click on this button up here in the menu box, where you see the 1 changing to an A, if you click on this, now you'll see that SPSS has now started to give these levels interesting, uh, uh, not interesting, but at least interpretable uh, labels. So we can continue to enter our data in this way. So the next few eight subjects were in the second level of the lecture style, which was uh, boring. So we enter two for all of these. And you'll see as we enter two, it automatically changes them to boring. So it's automatically changing what our levels are called. So the next eight subjects were in the boring, but with lots of revision condition. Oops. And the next eight subjects were also uh, exposed to the boring lecturer, but they uh, did no, no revision. So enter two for all of these, and it keeps wanting to do 22, so bear with me one second. So that's all of our data entered in. Just quickly recap what we did. Each row represents an individual subject. We have our, def our, our dependent variable, the thing that we're actually measuring in the first column, then in the next two columns, we tell SPSS which level of each of these two factors each subject was in. And we did this by entering ones or twos because we have two levels in each factor. And then we gave each of them meaningful labels just so SPSS can uh, interpret them a little bit better, or at least we can interpret when SPSS does its analysis. So the next stage now we've actually entered our data is to run the analysis of variance. So to do this is really very straightforward. So as with all analyses of variance, you first click on Analyze, then you go down to General Linear Model, and then you come across, instead of down to repeated measures like we did before, you come up to Univariate. So if you click on Univariate, this is now where we're engaging with the independent measures analysis of variance. So SPSS wants to know quite a few things. It first of all wants to know what our dependent variable is, or which column we've put our dependent variable in. Now, if you recall, our dependent variable is in the score column. So we click on score and now hit this across arrow. So now SPSS is coding that our score is our dependent variable. Now, SPSS wants to know what our fixed factors are. What this means is basically what were your independent variables? What are the factors in your design? Remember that our factors are lecture style and revision style. So we select both of these and move them across into this box here. And that's all you need to do, really. What I will do is I'll just do an extra couple of things just to get a bit more information from SPSS during the output. First thing I want to do is to generate a plot just so I can visualize what my data looks like. So I click on plots, and I get this pop-up dialog box here. SPSS wants to know which factor do we want displayed across the horizontal axis, and which factor do we want to be displayed as separate lines. Now, it doesn't really matter which you do here, um, so I will just uh, do this like so. Remember to hit this Add button here. Now click Continue. Now what you do is just hit OK. You can ask for extra information under Options. You can look for descriptive statistics, uh, estimates of effect size, etc. But we won't cover this uh, just now. So click Continue. Now hit OK and our output will be generated. So again, SPSS pr provides us with uh, some information that we uh, need to interpret our analysis of variance here. What we need to look for is the box that's called Tests of Between Subjects Effects. Now, this is the box we need to look for because all of our independent variables were manipulated between subjects. So this is where all of our uh, data is that we need to interpret our effect. So here we see uh, you can ignore the corrected model and intercept, and down here, error total, corrected total for the time being. This does provide inform interesting information, but it's a little bit beyond the scope of what I'm covering today. So for lecturer style, we want to know whether lecturing style had any effect on the final scores whatsoever. So remember back to our video on main effects and interactions. The main effect of lecturer style is just interested in whether the scores differ between an interesting lecturer and a boring lecturer, ignoring whether people did uh, lots of revision or not much, uh, not much revision at all. So if we look across here, we've got our degrees of freedom and our F value here, which is 0.399. 
But what we're really interested in to decide whether the effect is statistically significant or not, whether the difference here is significant or not, is this final column here, the sig column. This is your exact p-value. And remember in psychology, although it's very arbitrary, in order for an effect to be significant, the p-value needs to be less than 0.05. So here we see that our p-value is 0.533, so this main effect is not significant. So the lecturing style had no effect at all on the uh, outcome of the exams. So in the revision style, did revision have any effect on the data? Well, here we see we have a very large F value of 20.98, and the P value is indistinguishable from zero, so it's very, very small. So this is much less than 0.05, so we can declare that revision did have a significant effect. Now, of course, from this you can't tell whether people did better, whether they did lots of revision, or whether they did better doing no revision. To look at this, you'd need to look at your descriptive statistics, but we can have a look at the, uh, at the plot here. So here's the plot. So we've got the blue line is the uh, conditions where people did lots of revision. The green line is where people did uh, no revision. On the left, we've got data for the interesting lecturers, and on the right, we've got the data for the boring lecturers. And as you can see, the blue line is much, much higher than the green line. This is indicative of the main effect of revision type. People who did lots of revision scored much better than people who did no revision at all. The blue line is always higher than the green line. There's not much difference in between whether people were exposed to an interesting lecturer or a boring lecturer, although you'll see that the line does go down a little bit here. This effect was non-significant in our uh, main effect of lecturing style. And in this particular data set, there was no significant interaction. So this might seem a little bit complicated because your lecturers might tell you that whenever you see non-parallel lines, this is indicative of an interaction being present. Well, this is true. It's indicative that an interaction might be present, but you always have to check your statistics. In our statistics here, our lecturer style by revision style, so this third row along here, is showing us the effect of the interaction, whether there is an interaction between the two factors. The p-value is much greater than 0.05, so this effect is non-significant too. So I'm hoping that you found this uh, short video lecture uh, helpful for your studies. So the main difficulty with doing between subjects effects analyses of variance is just how you enter the data. So this changes a little bit from what we've done in the past. You need separate subjects on every row as before, but you need columns telling SVSS which level of each factor each particular participant is in. Okay, so that's all for now. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to drop me an email. Thank you very much.